here I am at an exhibition hall. Who am I going to meet? And this is Czech photographer David Tyshinsky, the artist behind works at this exhibition I am currently at. I have received news that the Towards the Day After Today exhibition, jointly hosted by the Korea Foundation, Czech Center Seoul, and Czech Embassy, is being held here at the KF Gallery. The main theme of this exhibition is SDGs. Will you go? We haven't confirmed the interview yet, though. Oh, sounds like a plan. That's how I came to visit the opening ceremony for the Towards the Day After Tomorrow exhibit. I took a look around the exhibition before the event began. A lot of people have come to participate in today's event. Oh, I found the ambassador. I also see the director of Czech Center Seoul and the photographer. The audience, what is going on around the world? But also in my... This event comes at an opportune time as it allows us to ponder up and discuss how to address these challenges and ensure that the future generations will be able to enjoy many days after today. Our embassy is constantly promoting sustainability in all its activities. That is why we decided to support this very meaningful exhibition here in Korea Foundation. So on one side we have the photographs that capture the harsh realities of poverty, environmental pollution and other problems facing humanity. On the other hand, the AR work provides an interactive and hopefully entertaining way to learn about the key aspects of sustainable development. It looks nice to me uh, how it looks like and I'll make a picture with you guys. Yeah, cool. After the event, I quickly went to say hello to the ambassador. Yes, hello, hi, hi. Yes. Yeah. I had to ask him about the interview. He readily agreed and even suggested something interesting. The best thing would be uh, all three of us with the, with the head of the Czech Center, because this is basically their exhibition. Maybe, yeah? So that's how I was able to book the Czech ambassador, the director of the Czech Center Seoul, and the artist at the opening. So, I have all three joining me for an interview here at the exhibition. So, a master and director, it's been a while. How have you been? Quite busy mm -hmm. after COVID period. Mm. It's uh, the diplomatic life uh, is renewed again. Mm. A lot of visits, also some exhibitions like this one. Mm. So, I think that we are enjoying now our time and mm. work here. How about you? Yeah, right. Since we met last time, we have done a lot of events together with the embassy. So it's been quite busy, but it's great to have some work. And Mr. Tyshinsky, for the viewers of our program, could you maybe briefly introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm an independent photographer, and also I'm into documentary movies nowadays. And I'm, I'm always seeking uh, stories and somehow, somehow, for me, interesting people's lifestyles and people from different subcultures. And I, um, all my aim in photography is to kill stereotypes and open eyes with the photography. So I use it as a tool. David Teshinsky is an independent photographer from the Czech Republic who focuses on capturing urban subcultures, street life, and people's stories. Recording the daily lives of various people 
by visiting more than 60 countries, Tyshinsky's photographs raise questions by testifying to situations such as exploitation and exclusion, hatred and discrimination, inequality and poverty. Tyshinsky's works have been featured on various media outlets around the world, like The Guardian, The Huffington Post, and Le Monde. He has also participated in around 80 events, including solo exhibits and group exhibitions held in Europe, the US, and Israel. In 2017, he was also honored at the Sony World Photography Awards, the leading competition for photographers and artists. 17 of his works capturing the vivid realities of marginalized lives taken during his travels have been linked to the SDGs and are displayed at an exhibition in Seoul titled Towards the Day After Today. So is it your first time in Korea? Well, it is if I don't count the five-hour transfer in 2013 and seeing one Buddhist temple. Yes, otherwise it's, it's the first time. Oh, okay. I heard this is not your first exhibition in Korea, right? Yes, uh, I've already had one in Yosu last year, but I was ill, so I couldn't come. Oh, that's why this is your first time yes. visiting in Korea. Oh, okay, I got it. Not first <laughs> exhibition, but first time personally. Okay. So, Master, how did this exhibition come about? Is there any special reason? Uh, of course, that one of the main reasons is that uh, sustainability and uh, sustainable development goals uh, is one of the priorities of the Czech uh, uh, policy, Czech foreign policy, and of course also of our embassy. We know that uh, it's an important subject, but we, for to attract the people, you also need to have attracted form. Mm -hmm. We have actually a couple of uh, materials, a couple of exhibitions uh, related to sustainable development goals and uh, we decided to put up together the content which would de de explain in more details mm -hmm. the, the topic of the, of the sustainable development goals. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, are global objectives adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to action to ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. The term sustainable development began to be used after it was defined in the 1987 report of the World Commission on Environment and Development, titled Our Common Future. It means development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The SDGs present 17 goals and 169 sub-goals for the direction of humanity in five areas, prosperity, people, planet, peace, and partnerships, under the slogan, leave no one behind. The SDGs are not only important for eradicating poverty, they are becoming increasingly important as an international commitment and policy tool, encompassing inclusive life values such as justice and human rights, gender equality, community, and nature. And uh, when we uh, saw the exhibition in Yosu and we saw the uh, master photographs uh, showing uh, objects which can be related to SDGs, we decided to combine these together and now here we are. <laughs> So, Director, the title of this exhibition is Towards the Day After Today. What is the meaning of the title? So, we were talking with KF to find the title that would be most appropriate. And in the beginning, the topic of sustainable development can seem a little bit overwhelming or difficult. Mm. So, the point of the title is to showcase that we have to take it one day at a time. So, if we do a little bit, Tomorrow and the day after that, we can solve these enormous challenges. So what made you plan this exhibition with Mr. Tesinski? I received an email from him in 2021, and I was immediately struck by the power of his photos. Um, I think they combine not just documentary, but also an, a strong artistic side. And they had uh, yeah emotional impact on me. And I really wanted to make sure that they are seen in Korea. And we also wanted to introduce the other part of the exhibition, 
the augmented reality. And the idea is to have two different exhibitions in one mm. to make sure you can really understand the topic well. Mm. And maybe one is artistic and thought provoking mm. and the other one is playful and interactive. And I think that really works. Mm. So Mr. Tisinski, how did you feel about participating in this exhibition? Like, is there anything in common with the work you've been working on? Yeah, everything. And well, I am very happy to be here. That's that's, and I think it's it's. Uh, I have the I have the best feeling from this uh, exhibition compared to all the other exhibitions before. Seriously, it has seriously everything to do with what I've been doing because. What I've been doing is to cover uh, social and environmental issues and well, also other issues. And so it kind of makes sense completely because mm -hmm. that's like my main goal to focus on these things. So this picture is related to no poverty, right? Mm -hmm. So this picture is taken in 2011 in Paris. Um, I, I, I have had no aim at the time when I was there, but then I found it because, well, there is homelessness all around the world, but I have never seen, maybe I haven't been to uh, enough places yet at that time, but I've never seen more people living in the public places uh, like this. So I've just captured those uh, moments, including this one. Were they okay about taking pictures? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, um, I have asked them, but normally if you do documentary photography mm -hmm. and you don't follow the story of somebody or some community, mm -hmm. so you can talk about it in advance, mm -hmm. then it's better, well, it's up to you, but it's better if you don't ask, because mm -hmm. otherwise if you ask, you might just destroy the whole moment. Mm -hmm. But I have asked, so mm -hmm. they, they, they look at me, they, they, they smile. Mm -hmm. They're fine, and it's not very visible, but there is a little baby here also. Oh, yeah. nice. This is a group of indigenous, and their land has been burned intentionally mm. by the greedy farmers. Oh. And this is just a day in life. I don't know, I, I appreciate this picture not more than all my other babies, but kind of more, even it ended up on the front page of the Guardian once oh. at that time. Mm -hmm. So these are the activists in Germany in the movement called Ende Gelande, and they are trained for a couple of days in, before they actually do this movement, and there, there are hundreds of heavyweight police, uh, and they are fighting, and the police is beating them, and they are trained to go through and uh, even though half of them will get beaten up, they still want to change the planet in this environmental project. And this was the moment when uh, they went through the police. And so I was there as well, and I, I was sliding down the sound on my ass, oh. and I just moved wow. and took this picture. That's, oh. that's the story. Wow. I think but I still could do the composition even though, it was fast, it doesn't look like that, but it was fast. Yeah. I ended up, <laughs> Full of sand, my camera was full of sand, uh -huh. and it was a decent oh. experience. I, I think to capture this kind of photo, you must be, have, you have to be like very brave and very like... Like skillful. Good. Yeah, skillful. Skillful. I'll guide you to mine. <laughs> This is for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you may say uh, that uh, the people are dressed uh, in a very fancy way. This mm -hmm. is the, before the gay pride. Mm -hmm. And also, this is taken in uh, my city, in Prague. Oh. Actually, in one of the, if not the most expensive uh, street, which is called Parisian, mm -hmm. Paris Road. And uh, you see a lot of condemnation in, in their faces. But the interesting thing is that uh, each uh, face has a kind of different expression, mm. even though they are all of them expression of condemnation. Mm. So this really caught my attention. Oh. So I think it's quite funny to talk about my idea of this photo in front of the artist himself, but I'll do my best of what I see in it and why it's interesting. So David himself told me that the rabbit just darted 
out of nowhere and there's no forest or nature nearby. This is a really desolate and destroyed land. So I think it's almost miraculous that this rabbit appeared there. Uh, what I like about it is that so far nature found its way even into this area, but if we are not careful, it might not be possible in the future. And the other level that I really like is a hint right here, the wind turbines, the clean energy that is possible. If we don't go for this, there's at least chance for that. It is now time to see the photo that left the biggest impression on me. I thought it was very intense and I just see her face. She's very young and she looks very innocent, but like she's selling the flowers in this, I don't know, looks somewhat dangerous street. She didn't provide any cause for the various problems in the world now, but she has to face the problems of the world and bear the burden. So this photo left a great impact on me. Which one left the biggest impression on you? You can get information on SDGs through AR work available at the exhibition. Oh, wow! <laughs> and so you see the picture comes alive, uh -huh. and if you click on it, uh -huh. you get a fun animation and text uh -huh. which explains uh -huh. details about each of the development oh, goals. Oh, wow! You can find out more about SDGs in a fun way through this work. Uh, there's also a different part uh -huh. oh. where, which uh, shows us the innovations in the actual industry uh -huh. of Czech. Mm -hmm. So if you, oh, what's this? Oh. you can get a machine that helps us and details, uh -huh. you can zoom in and out. And this is also related to yeah. the Yeah. Yeah, so this is from the Biosef Institute ah. and they use special it's miniature really scissors nanometers, DNA spiral, oh, wow. so it's all related. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, very and actually good. this is the sustainable way to show the exhibition, oh. because you can imagine how much material would have to be used if we wanted to present this in reality. So also, this augmented reality oh. is also part of the sustainability, I would say. Yeah. Also very smart way to promote the Czech industry. <laughs> we hope so. Yeah. So Ambassador, in 2015, the UN decided to achieve sustainable development goals. Do you think the world is making sustainable progress now? I think so. Uh, of course, that there is a hard data to show that progress. And uh, I think now everybody thinks more about the future and about the consequences of their action. And uh, I think that the SDGs uh, give uh, this world um, uh, some content. Yeah, so some guidance, what we actually understand under them and also should give the guidance to the people mm -hmm. for their behavior, how they should behave, mm -hmm. what they should follow mm -hmm. in their actions and also for the governments, mm -hmm. yeah, how they should allocate the resources and how they should uh, set the policies. Mm -hmm. And there is the yearly report mm -hmm. which shows the progress uh, of the countries so if you put in the browser mm -hmm. SDG report uh, 2022 index, mm -hmm. then you get this page. Mm -hmm. And on this page, you can browse the information which relates to your country. Because oh, I believe okay. that uh, it's really good to understand mm -hmm. SDGs mm -hmm. through your own country. Mm -hmm. You understand the life in your own country, mm -hmm. so then it becomes more clear. Mm -hmm. The Sustainable Development Report is a study that evaluates performance on the SDGs as agreed upon in 2015 by the UN. In a ranking showing each country's SDG achievement rate as a score, Finland ranked first in 2022 with an SDG score of 86.51 out of 100. Meanwhile, Korea's 2022 SDG score was 77.9 placing it 27th among 163 member countries. Although tasks remain, Korea was evaluated as seeing gradual improvement in six areas, poverty, education, economic growth and job promotion, 
industrial innovation and social infrastructure establishment, creating sustainable cities and residential areas, inclusive and just societies, and institutions. However, it was evaluated that major challenges still remain in the areas of gender equality, reduction of inequality within and between countries, climate action, marine resources, terrestrial ecosystems and resources, and global partnerships. The Czech Republic ranked 13th among 163 members with an SDG score of 80.5. It was evaluated as on track for SDG achievements, having reached the goal for poverty eradication. Although some tasks remain, the Czech Republic was also evaluated as on track to achieve or was already maintaining SDGs in areas such as economic growth and job promotion, sustainable cities and residential areas, water quality and sanitation management, and terrestrial ecosystems and resources. Meanwhile, the country was evaluated as needing more work in areas such as hunger, sustainable consumption and production, climate action, and global partnerships. And director, the concept of sustainable development is very broad and as is said, sometimes very overwhelming. So is there anything that Czech Center has all paid special attention to while planning this exhibition? So <clears throat> if you approach each photo at this exhibition or each panel for the AI work, I think it gives you an immediate chance to see what that development goal is in reality. So if you look behind you, there is the problem of throwing away food, mm. right? So you see this and you immediately understand the concept. Mm. And I think that's the important point of this exhibition, mm. that we get a chance to look also mm. past the data mm. and to the emotional side of mm. what the goal can represent. If I may just yeah. add to it that we also paid attention uh, about the, the materials, so what is used for the exhibition. So if you have a look at the panels, yeah. you don't see any plastics. Oh. So we try to also give a message, oh. uh, sustainability oh. message uh, through uh, the actual uh, exhibition oh. itself. You use the recycled paper, right? Yes, oh. yes. And we are very thankful for the Korea Foundation oh. that they helped us uh, with this exhibition mm -hmm. and uh, also to translate our ideas mm -hmm. into reality. We wrapped up the interview in a hurry because there was a talk scheduled between the artists and visitors. And a big round of applause for Director Misha Manofsky for our moderation as well. Since I'm here, I decided to participate in the session. I mean, I feel the drive to do that stuff because uh, before uh, it's, a, it's a process. Because in the beginning, I just I just knew I wanted to photograph and I wanted to travel when I was selling the board. But now I know I want to deliver the message. And I have the, the strong feeling that to, to do it, so I just, uh, I, I just feel it. A lot of people asked interesting questions. Listening to the stories, there was a question I wanted to ask. Yeah, well, um, it, it might not have been their exact attitude to kill stereotypes, but of course, if you photograph something that uh, shows people other way of seeing things, it can kill certain stereotypes. Or if you focus on the subjects that are actually stereotyped, but you photograph them differently, so you kill the stereotypes this way. I wondered what other Koreans felt after the talk session. 지금 이분은 정말 우리가 지금 생각해야 할그 그 테마를 거의 다 잡아냈어요. 빈곤의 문제, 환경의 문제, 뭐 아무튼 이 지금 문명의 문제 골고루 전쟁의 문제까지 그게 참 상당히 인상적이었습니다. 사회 문제 자체에 대해서, 대해서는 뭐 내가 여기에 뭐를 기여할 수 있을까라는 고민을 한번 하게 됐었거든요. 
플라스틱 사용을 조금 줄이거나 물 관련된 거는 내가 좀 실천을 할수 있겠구나 그런 생각을 했습니다. 이렇게 어려움을 겪는 국가들이 많구나는 알고 있었지만 그것을 생생한 모습으로 어, 제 3자가 경험한 것들을 제가 사진을 통해서 직접 느낄 수 있어서 좋았고요. And lastly, I asked them what their last message was. We would like to bring the word sustainability closer to the people, to explain more their meaning and uh, also using the visual arts. And of course, uh, we also want to promote Czech Republic as the country that cares. So I think if people come to this exhibition, I hope they leave thinking that the change is not just possible, mm. but inevitable. Mm. That we are going in the right direction mm. if we all choose, mm. even if through a little action, to do mm. something. Mm. So you can take tarongi outside a bicycle or mm. try to use less plastic. Mm. There are so many different ways. Mm. So if you pick one way mm. and you do that little thing, I think that's all we can hope for. Czechui? In Czech? Czechui. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You are welcome. In my own way, I decided to celebrate coming to the exhibition today. This I I After the opening of the exhibition, they were asking me, was it intentional that there is just the men? Oh. And, and stuff like that, because there is always symbolic, even though it was not intentional. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. She has the prosthetic leg and she's living like that. And she has hiked up to Kilimanjaro a couple of times, like oh. more than 15 actually, wow. uh, with a group of people with also prosthetic legs. Mm.